So, in other news, let's go out there and talk about the other conversation point that was brought to our attention this morning, courtesy of Kevin Weeks. This is yet another one of the videos that we all love so much, where Kevin Weeks is giving us his forehead in the middle of a random location. This time, he happens to be in Toronto, and there you go. That's the tower, baby. Views from the six. Am I right? Am I right? But this is the very short nine second video that Kevin Weeks went out there and gave us. Breaking news. I am told the top goaltender prospect Yaroslav Askarov has informed the Nashville Predators that he will not report to their AHL team and has requested a trade. So there you go, folks. It's official. This was from 6 a.m. earlier this morning. Yaroslav Askarov has himself a trade request. And as some of these replies go out there and say, hey, he wants the starting job and he's not going to get it in Nashville, so rightfully he is asking out. I never understood why Soros was signed. The Oilers should ignore Broberg and Holloway and trade for him. It's the little let's go that really does it for me, Kevin. Yeah, okay, just watch the video. It's nine seconds long. But either way... Yaroslav Askarov is indeed in a spot where his future in the NHL is absolutely not guaranteed. Sure, he'll be a backup. He'll be good enough to suit up in maybe, let's say, 20, 25, 30 games as a backup in the NHL. That's fine. But he doesn't want that. He wants to be a starter. He knows he can be a starter. Everybody in the hockey world knows that Yaroslav Askarov, out of everybody from that 2020 NHL draft, he was probably the guy that was going to be the starter most likely out of the draft class. He was so good, so talented, and so poised, but that opportunity was never going to come with Nashville, especially after they had signed UC Soros to that huge big money deal. Let's go out there and read some other tweets here on the social media as Michael Gallagher went out there and posted this after the news was sent out regarding Yaroslav Askarov. Barry Trotz was prepared for a trade request the moment he offered UC Soros that eight-year contract. From conversations that Michael Gallagher has had, the sense I get is that Trotz and Askarov just clash too much personality-wise for Trotz to commit to him anything other than taking it year by year. So, of course, that is a very strange thing to go out there and learn about. I don't think we've heard anybody have some sort of a fractured relationship, personality clash like this in a long time. Trotz and Askarov clash too much personality-wise for Trotz to commit him anything longer than taking it year by year. I wonder what kind of clashes they have. I wonder what kind of conversations they get heated about, what things that they disagree on. That seems like a really interesting fly-on-the-wall situation for anybody who is a Nashville Predators fan. And then there are also some other replies going out there. Oh, he's not NHL ready yet, based off the 10 to 12 times I've seen him play over the past two seasons. He's not ready to be an NHL starter, but he's absolutely ready to be a 15 to 20 game backup in the National Hockey League. And then the top reply says, okay, but then why did we go out there and sign Scott Wedgwood? We could have saved that money and just brought in Askarov to be the backup. It feels like he doesn't accept the role of being Juice's backup either. So already you could see the building blocks for this kind of disagreement here. Oh, he wants to be a number one, but then the number one got re-signed to an eight-year deal. Okay, I guess he could be the number two, but then they had signed Wedgwood, who is supposed to be a number two as well, and Askarov would default to being an AHL guy, which is not what he wants. He doesn't want to be in the AHL, and he has told them that he's not going to report to their AHL team. So this situation is getting kind of ugly as we continue going along here. Statement from Predators Barry Trotz on the Askarov trade request. This was posted furthermore after the other tweets that we had looked at. We are aware of the report today and our expectation is for the player to report to training camp and compete for a job in September. And, of course, it's like, bro, he's not competing with an elite goaltender you just signed for eight years. That entire thing is totally just NHL GM talk. He's not gonna, you know, realistically be there by the time training camp comes and goes if Barry Trotz is doing his job correctly, right? Askarov has no choice but to report to regular Nashville Predators camp. He's just not gonna report to the AHL, and who knows if there's gonna be some sort of a fining process if there's any sort of possibility for that if, let's say, the Predators do not trade Askarov and they just say, hey, you're going to be here, you're going to get sent down, and nothing else is going to happen, then, I mean, look, who knows if there's like a breach of contract, whatever situation. I feel like the Predators do have some power here, but 
at the same time, knowing that their guy wants out. They've got no choice but to entertain these thoughts, right? Especially since they could get some extra value in return, something that could help out their team right now, maybe an extra player who knows what the possibilities are. Michael Gallagher went out there and tweeted this, that a couple of teams he's been told to keep an eye out regarding Askarov are Carolina and San Jose. So we can talk about some of these teams as the video goes on, but if you go over to the Askarov profile here, 22 years old, 6'4", 179, right-handed catching goaltender, 11th overall pick by Nashville back in the 2020 NHL draft. He was super, super good in Russia before being drafted. And that was his entire shtick, that he was one of the most capable young junior goaltenders that the Russian scene had ever seen, pretty much. I mean, that 2020 draft eligible year, 9-2-0 save percentage in the VHL. That's not the MHL, the Junior League, that's the second tier Pro League. His numbers in the Junior League the year beforehand as a 16-year-old were also fantastic, a 9-2-1 save percentage over there. Askarov was just so incredibly fantastic in the Russian development system, and he took his talent over into the North American systems as well. 9-11 save percentage in the AHL in back-to-back -back years. He had a 9-4-3 save percentage with the Nashville Predators in the two games played he had had there, plus a win. So he had his first NHL win already, 1-4-7 goals against. He has been nothing short of awesome. Now, sure, there were a few hiccups in the road here in the playoffs, 8-8-2 save percentage as the Milwaukee Admirals got defeated, but still, Yaroslav Askarov is a guy who, at this point, he is a more than capable NHL backup, and maybe even a guy who could push for a starter role if you wanted to give him that chance. It's just, in Nashville, he is not going to get that chance, with UC Soros being given that eight-year extension, there's just no realm of possibility for Askarov to overtake that. So if you go over to some of these other teams here, Carolina, San Jose, it's a tale as old as time for the Carolina Hurricanes. This is a team that if they just had competent goaltending, if they just had a legit number one that played like a number one, they probably would have had themselves a Stanley Cup Finals appearance by now. Like, that team is just so darn good. They are so capable. They do everything right, but they just need a goaltender. They need somebody to show up and actually provide them stable goaltending in order for them to really go from a middling contender every year where it's like, yeah, they win all these playoff series, they make the second, they make the third round, but they never get past that. They could have gotten past that with good goaltending. I'm not saying that Askarov is that right now, but but he definitely projects to being that in the future. Meanwhile, if you go over to the San Jose Sharks, they've had their guys rotating around there. I mean, the entire story with who is the guy that made those weird nihilistic comments about how life doesn't matter? Devin Cooley? Yeah, that was a really cool situation. Capo Kakadin was there for a while too. In fact, I want to take a look at our boy Devin Cooley, the most nihilistic NHL player out there and a guy that I think is certainly cut out for him in terms of NHL stardom and spotlight. So they had a bunch of guys suiting up for their team last year. Magnus Krona, Devin Cooley, Capo Kakin, and Mackenzie Blackwood, Georgie Romanov. Lots of guys. Romanov had a 9.67 save percentage in two games. That's crazy. Probably in relief, though. Two games played 59 minutes, right? So a lot of opportunity in San Jose. I feel like Askarov going over to the Sharks would be best case scenario for his career, considering that they could just give him what he wants right away, right? But either way, if you are a fan of the Carolina Hurricanes or the San Jose Sharks, I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this entire Yaroslav Askarov trade request situation? And how do you feel about Carolina and San Jose being two of the teams that we are being told to keep an eye on in regards to this entire Askarov ordeal? Shout out to Kevin Weeks for being in front of the views here. Oh yeah, there's Drake up on the top of the tower, baby. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Yaroslav Askarov and his entire profile. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99. And bye.